first stadiums build part six and today I'm starting on the upper deck this is gonna be one of the most difficult and time-consuming parts of the project um, what you see here in this entire video is one week's worth of work and I think the entire upper deck might take close to a month to finish but I am looking forward to it because I think it's gonna look really cool So this whole week's project, everything you're going to see in this video, are the columns that basically hold up the upper deck. They also make up the outside facade of the stadium, and I needed to make 60 of them. And you'll kind of see all the work that goes into it and why it took so long. So I do have a very serious topic that I want to cover later on in this video. But first, let's get into a little bit of the history of Wrigley Field. When I left off at last week's video, what you saw is the main grandstand was completed. And something I kind of think was cool is looking at that and realizing that's what Wrigley Field looked like when it opened in 1914. The only exception is I didn't build the roof that went around the grandstand. So what was the important thing I said I wanted to talk about? Well, I tweeted about it earlier this week if you follow me on the Twitter but it has to do with our future generation and you know every generation thinks the generation below them is absolute garbage you know boomers think millennials are garbage us millennials think the kids that are growing up right now are just not going to grow up in the best world but I have evidence I have proof that everything is going to be okay when I grew up in the 90s the fabric of our childhood the fabric of our society revolved around a few jokes that we would tell on the playground. And no, I'm not talking about your simple knock-knock jokes. None of that stuff. That's the stuff you do in kindergarten. I'm talking about the jokes that prove that you have grown up, that proved that you can be edgy and raw and mature and that you're ready to immerse yourself into our society. I know these jokes are still around because I myself fell victim to one of them and to be honest, I proudly and gladly fell victim to one of these jokes. It was very simple. The kid came to me and he just said, hey, what's under there? He didn't point at anything. I didn't even think he was looking. I wasn't sure what he was talking and innocently I replied, what's under where? The child immediately burst into laughter. My face became flushed, slightly embarrassed, but then a second I thought, no, I shouldn't be embarrassed. I should be proud that this child born in 2010 is keeping our jokes alive. As I said earlier, generations always seem to be at ends with each other. But these jokes, these jokes are bridging the gaps between our generations. And let me take a break from the story real quick to talk about the stadium and what you're actually watching. Since what you're watching doesn't exactly match up with what I'm talking about. What I'm making in this video, I'm just kind of calling them uh, the pillars. Uh, just because I don't really have a better way to explain it. But basically, there are these odd shaped triangles that are going to be held up by some beams you'll see me build later. Each one of these pillars has some different characteristics about them. For instance, not all of them is going to have a beam that goes out on the front side, and some of them are going to have little uh, right triangles at the bottom to help prop them up. And I had to map that all out, as you can see here on this piece of paper. Then I use Excel to make a bunch of 90 degree angles so that when I'm gluing some of these pieces together, I know that I have a guide to keep them nice and straight. And now I'm gluing all the weird shaped triangles to the top of the 90 degree angles. Each 90 degree angle is going to be one pillar. Like I said earlier, I needed to make 60 of these bad boys. And then there's all these little tiny pieces that I didn't show you myself making, but they're all going to go together to make the pillars and I know you got to be fascinated and wondering what these are going to look like at the end of the video and how they're going to contribute to the paper Wrigley Field. The first step is putting the big beam on the end. I didn't think about this for the camera, but I should have made the Excel spreadsheet with a lighter gray so that you can see me putting all these in here. So if you look at the exterior of the actual Wrigley Field, you'll see how there's a bunch of green beams. 
Well, that's basically what I'm adding right now to the weird shaped triangles is those green beams that'll surround the exterior and make up the facade of paper Wrigley Field. Back to that very important story about those those important jokes that we tell as we grow up. Though I was very happy to hear the kid trick me into saying what's under there, as I walked away from that conversation, I got to thinking, maybe it was just a one-off. You know, maybe this generation still has no hope at all. Maybe they, this kid got lucky this one time and told an iconic joke that has lasted for decades. This was weighing heavy on my heart. I mean, this entire summer I barely ate, barely slept, barely even talked because I needed to hear another joke like this again. It was Labor Day, roughly 3.06 p.m. I brought my boys over to my sister's house to hang out with their cousins. My 10-year-old nephew came up to me and said, hey, what's your name? Baffled, I said, Uncle Trey. And he said, what color is my shirt? He pointed at his blue shirt and of course I answered, blue? And then he pointed toward the sky and said, what direction am I pointing? And I replied, up. Suddenly there was life in my eyes again. Could this be? Could this be the moment? I looked at him, a smirk on his face. Oh my goodness, it's about to happen. He raised his voice and repeated what I had just said. Uncle Trey blew up. The kid a few months ago who tricked me into saying what's underwear does not stand alone anymore. Now my nephew stands right next to him as the two beacons of hope for the future. And lo and behold, I heard another one. Another one of these iconic jokes that has survived for decades. When my nephew followed up with another joke, he looked at me, another smirk on his face, ready to strike, ready to make me look like a fool. I was happy to play the fool when he asked me to spell I cup. Now let's take another time out real quick to talk about the stadium. And one of the last things I did was glue a bunch of right triangles to the beams. I'm going to help this thing, uh, help them keep from falling from side to side. As you can see there, I had to use a paper clamp to hold them into place while the glue dries. And after I set this one, I'll zoom in and show you exactly what, what I'm doing here. But not every single one of the pillars needed this. And I don't even know if you care about all these details. But at some point, it's just nice to hear myself talk. At least, if I hear myself talk, at least someone's listening to me. At least someone's listening. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what I'm talking about with the right triangles that I'm going to be gluing to most of the pillars. And uh, let's go ahead and hit the time lapse and wrap this video up before I say something even more embarrassing. The whole reason I told the story about the jokes is just to give you hope, to let you know that everything is going to be alright. I feel like people should like write a song with those words or something just to let you know that everything is going to be alright. These kids got it man. They know the jokes. They know what makes our society now. Everything else is just going to fall right into place. I promise you that. I'm using all these paper clamps to hold the right triangles in place while the glue dries. And I gotta say, just looking at them, the symmetry of how they're all lined up in the perfect rows is so visibly satisfying. It almost seems like a scene from a movie where a bunch of soldiers are marching to war, marching towards battle, but they're doing it for their country. And then there's the one soldier that wore the black uniform instead of the pink uniform. And sure, he'll get ridiculed for it. Well, at least he's there to fight with his brothers. And there it is, the finished product. That is one of the 60 beams that you just watched me make. Like I said, it took a whole week. Probably somewhere close to six to seven man hours. And next week we're gonna start standing these up and putting them around the stadium. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that jazz and I'll catch you on the flippity flip.